Hey everyone, so welcome to another episode of our podcast, Kun Rajel. So today I have uh, my brother-in-law, but also a dear friend of mine, Wasim Saleh. Wasim, welcome to Kun Rajel. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, it's finally, it's a pleasure. It's I'm very, very excited to be here. I've been obviously watching your videos since day one. And uh, you know that we were really like, so for the idea of yeah. having the podcast and yeah. I'm finally here. So finally here. Very excited. Super happy to have you here. So listen, before we get started, I need to tell everyone here that our, our outfits were not planned. It just happened to be that in the elevator, we, we realized that we were wearing exactly the same thing. So just if anyone was wondering, uh, nice shirt, by the way, looks a bit like mine. But anyways, thank uh, you. Uh, so it's a, I honestly recently bought it from, a, it's a, it's a local brand. It's a homegrown brand. It talks about the roots, hence, uh, the camel that you see in the logo and uh, it's not officially launched yet. So, uh, it's going to be launching in two days. So oh, just check okay. it out. It's called free world rookies. Nice. Uh, I'm not sponsored, but uh, <laughs> this is not an ad, guys. I'm just yeah, saying. It's not an really, ad, it's but not. <laughs> honestly, their material is awesome. insane. Awesome, awesome. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm very happy to be here. Awesome. Well, let's let's get straight into it. So, Wasim, as as you already know by now, uh, the first question I'm going to be as- asking you is, what does Kunder Jail mean to you? Ah, oh, type Kunder Jail has a lot of meanings. Uh, it it really thinks. Uh, I mean. It really depends on how you think of it. To me, it's uh, if you take it literally, it means be a man. Uh, but I think the meaning is slowly shifting in our generation versus previous generations. Yani, Konrajel used to be like, don't show emotions, uh, be a man, uh, don't be afraid of a couple of th- of, of whatever, uh, don't cry, don't whatever. But mm-hmm. Konrajel honestly is. Uh, has more to that. It's actually, yes, it is be a man, but be a man by showing emotions. That's what I think of. Uh, Be a man by standing up to what's right. Be a man by protecting your loved ones, your family, Mm -hmm. because that's what being a man really means. It's not just not showing emotions. No, that's not what or how I think of. It's really just being a man in our 21st yeah. uh, century and in our generation not uh so yeah honestly to me it's also like showing emotions is something that is uh something we should not be shy of especially okay. as men in our generation yeah yani men cry men uh, laugh men feel sad men feel happy so there is nothing wrong uh in that no, definitely. I think I think it's like you need, you know you need to be a you need to be a modern day man in terms of you you know you you have you have uh, you know a, a balance you know between having the the older idea of what it means to be a man, which is the protector, the provider, etc., etc., but also having the the more new side, which is again showing these emotions, talking up about things, uh, knowing that it's all okay, and you know, and you can be uh, vulnerable when you when you 100%. need to. You know, so so yeah, so hello. You know what I what I wanted to ask you as well is, you know, how did that word kunrajel affect you in your life, if if it has by any way? So is there is are there times in life where you felt like, you know, I need to uh, man up per se, or was it just you know a, a a thought that always lingered in your mind in certain situations as a kid or even now mm. uh, today? Uh. Well, honestly, it, I think we'll talk about it more uh, throughout the episode for sure. But uh, I mean, we're lucky to have been brought into great families. Yeah. And I know your family very well, for sure. Yeah. And I, so the way how I was brought is I was never really enforced that if you cry, like, mm. don't cry. No, not really that, at least from a family point of view. But we've all been uh, in school and mm. uh, for sure, some sort of, I would say, bullying would be there from and to others. Like of that's course. how it was of a love hate relationship. We of would course. all get bullied and we would all bully people. And yeah. if someone, let's say, not really <clears throat> cries, but we would go like just Kun Rajel and stand up to yourself. Why are you crying? You're a man. Mm. But of course, 
that slowly tends to shift and then you would go like yeah i mean crying is fine but of course especially being a man uh, there's always that i would say stereotype or that uh, that image that you cannot uh, you cannot uh, cry and that's something that I don't know. I mean, that's, yeah, I don't know. And and by the way, you said something very important. I think it's a love-hate relationship, right? I mean, and I mean, I've experienced it firsthand where, you know, in school you would be told, you know, uh, you know, in other words, be a man, you shouldn't cry, you shouldn't do this, you should uh, be stronger, you should do this. But then you do it to other people because, you know, as as young boys, we do stupid things, you know, we, we, you know, we... I don't, yeah, I mean, we also inflict that idea and like we bring it onto other people, we make them feel like you're not this and you're not that when we don't do it ourselves. But then again, we didn't know much, I think. Uh, That's true. Up. And I think even until now, we still sometimes do that right. because we've, the, the whole idea of Kun Rajel and be a man is so in our roots that mm. if someone does something that, let's say, a man does something that's a bit feminine, we're like Kun Rajel. Mm-hmm. Even if we mean it as a joke, but mm-hmm. we still do believe that because men are physical. And I mean, yes, I do believe in equality. I do believe in yeah. equity between men and women. Men can do things that women can and women can do things that us men can. Mm-hmm. But it's by human nature that men are more physical. Women women are more emotional and there is no denying to that. So that's why if a man shows a sign of uh less let's say physical strength mm. then we're like kun rajel because stand up to your ground that's i mean we don't mean it in a bad way we just mean it in a way where we care about the person that's why we wouldn't yeah, bring it up uh, but but i think what's also worth mentioning is when we point that out to anyone especially that's younger maybe uh, when we say Kun Rajel, we would also follow this mm. phrase by saying that, look, it's not bad to cry. It's all right to cry because this assurance of uh, Kun Rajel, or, or the, we don't want mm. the person that is hearing that from us to feel that, you know what? Oh, I can't, I can't cry. No, because that's, that's the whole uh, idea of how we used to think of, right? Mm. But now mm. when we mm. say Kun Rajel, yeah, we're telling them, stand up to your ground, but it's also all right to feel like that. It's also all right to cry. It's all right to feel emotions. It's all right to feel sad. Yeah. So that's where I would say mm. awareness and being mindful is very, very important. Definitely. And that's what I, uh, what I think. Definitely. So, so okay. I mean, so we kind of touched upon it earlier in the episode where, you know, uh, you know, you've married my sister. I'm, you know, I, it's 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 been a great time for all of us, full of celebrations and all that stuff. Uh, but I think you know what we didn't expect, or what a lot of us didn't expect, is the similarities that we need to have, me and you have, in terms of you know living with my like sister. So how how I am as Karim, as a very um, bubbly random person I'll, I'll phrase it like that having ADHD and I think now as well she's saying the same thing with you it's like ah Karim used to do that at home or Karim used to do this or that so how you know one how's life been since uh and you can be very honest and two you know how, how do you how are you living with your ADHD since that's that's you know came up in yeah. your life so uh, it is very scary, and for people that know us, they well, they do know how common <laughs> we are mm. and how how alike we are. We have a lot of things in common, and it is very scary. Uh, I obviously started realizing that when I met you, and then the more I got to know you, I'm like, oh shit! Like mm-hmm. we have a lot in common. Yeah, even though the age gap of like five six years, but. Yeah. I see a lot of things that you do that I do and Miral, your sister, also sometimes brings things up that, man, you're a lot like Karim. Uh, oh my God, Karim does this or Karim. I'm like, great, because <laughs> you, you've you been living with your brother all your life. Now it's easier <laughs> for you to to handle these or, or to uh, cope with these type yeah. of situations. So yeah, I mean, 
things have been great. It's been almost a bit less than three months now since mm-hmm. we got married. Mm-hmm. Time flies. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Three I months. Really love that. Yeah. yeah. In 13 days, it'll be a three month anniversary. But uh, things have been honestly great. Alhamdulillah, so far, uh, we're very, very grateful. I mean, uh, there's always this idea of, you know, like marriage or scary. And mm. of course, it's there. And uh, a lot of people think that marriage is a big step. Some people think otherwise. And that's all. All fine. There's no right or wrong. It's because of how we think of it, in uh, or it's because of our experiences when right. we were young until now of marriage. If you, mm-hmm. if someone has had a bad, uh, let's say, marriage uh, between their, let's say, parents growing up, then they mm-hmm. would have a tendency to disagree with or have a harder time accepting marriage. Mm-hmm. But uh, honestly, I'm very, very grateful. Things have been great. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, so far, yeah. uh, we're, there's always, yeah, and there's also image that, you know, a perfect couple is a couple that doesn't argue or doesn't have disagreements, but that's pure bullshit. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. I'm just going to say it out loud. Mm. Uh, there are moments where you feel that, uh, I mean, there's always great times. It's all, that's the goal. It's yeah. to live a happy life, but happy doesn't exist without sad because that's an emotion and that's an emotion. And the same way where if you look at our heartbeats, mm-hmm. all right, when you go to the hospital and you connect these things on your body, you see the uh, heartbeats going up and down, up and down. This shows you life. If life was flat, plain and simple as let's say you're always happy and there are no problems or no uh, let's say arguments or disagreements, mm-hmm. then you would only live, you, you would be dead. You would not be alive. Mm-hmm. But if you're also always sad, then you would also always be dead. So uh, what I want to say is, uh, I mean, always going back to the question where, yeah, it's been great. Uh, there are the small disagreements where let's say you want to have this, you want to have that, I don't want to have this or whatever. But the the way how we, I would say how you we would resolve these issues is what matters. Of course. Because <clears throat> you might have a very small problem or disagreement, but if the, the uh, I would say the uh, the method to resolve it is aggressive or uh, toxic, Mm-hmm. then it would be result in a eventually in a bad relationship or if you have a very small argument but it's very healthy or i mean a very big argument but the way you resolve uh, the, the issues are very healthy then this is one way towards a better or uh, mm-hmm. i would say healthier relationship and that's that's what what studies show that these are the signs that a couple, a healthy couple looks for, of course, it's still new. Mm. We've dated for around two years before we got married and uh, you will never know the person fully, but <clears throat> it's one step at a time. And as long as two people always understand each other, understand that if we have a disagreement that we will talk it out, of course. then this is, I would say, a step towards and a, a healthy relationship. Yeah, and I and I think what you've I think what you're sort of alluding to here is like, it's like you know there's there's this willingness to to not uh, let things stop you, uh, you know to to see past. Okay, yeah, it's a small argument, but it's fine. We'll talk it out. It'll be fine. But I think to go back to you know to the idea of ADHD because I always think about this by the mm. way, which is I, I I do it a lot. I'm sure you know this. Uh, I overthink a lot. So it's like even even if it's a small argument with somebody about something super simple i would overthink a million times um as to okay are they upset are they not upset uh what does it mean about me so is that something that that you've dealt with uh i mean now in your marriage or even before that in life where it's been a super um like the relationship is very good but you have this one little argument that it's like ah you know and then you start to doubt yourself you start to overthink you become more anxious about things about the overall perspective of the relationship is that something that you've that you've dealt with I've definitely been through that. Uh, I've 
Yeah, for sure. I've been through that. And uh, there was a moment in life where you would overthink every single thing. Uh, and sometimes you would overthink a lot and it would, or I would run into a maze where, like, mm-hmm. oh my God, why is my brain saying this or doing this? And it would lead on for months sometimes. And uh, it it was very unhealthy. Yeah. But what... What matters, I'm not going to say that doesn't matter. It does because it affects the person you are now. Mm. But what really matters is how you think and deal with it, with those experiences in your life. If you mm. think that you've been through this negative time or, or sad or toxic time or whatever, and you don't deal with it or you don't learn from it, then that's where the issue is. But mm. uh, of course we uh, we human beings with a, with or without ADHD mm-hmm. tend to have these emotions Definitely. because that the brain when it experiences anything that is unstable all right or uh, that brings a bit of discomfort will eventually tend to these extreme scenarios where oh my god no like i mean how many times have you showered and thought of an argument with someone that you have had or you will have, and then mm-hmm. you don't even have that argument yeah. or, or the, uh, yeah. talk. But uh, look, we definitely, uh, I definitely personally have these thoughts, mm-hmm. but I've learned a lot throughout the years to limit and to put myself to ground. I, I ground myself. I The first step is to be mindful that you are overthinking, mm-hmm. that all right, listen, I'm think I'm overthinking right now, or am I overthinking? Yeah. Am I? Uh, so you question yourself and you ground yourself. Uh, that's what I do to to be able to act in a better way, mm. so that we don't be impulsive. We don't be, uh, you know. Em- Sometimes it's good to be emotional, but when we act, it's always good to be. A bit rational as well of course that you don't want to take a bad decision you don't want to make a bad decision you don't want to act in a way that you might regret later in the future so uh definitely that yeah. and and especially now that i'm married i mean it's still very weird saying that i'm married and to your <laughs> sister i mean yeah uh i think both of us we, we it's very good to both have uh, an understanding that all right with or without ADHD, again, mm. that she might overthink some situations sometimes. Definitely. I might overthink some situations. I might overreact or I might be uh, overwhelmed at some points in life. And if I am, I expect that from her to come and tell me, listen, but obviously not in an irritating way. But yeah. uh, I mean, but I mean, if I'm freaking out, it's on her sometimes. I mean, it's always on me, but it's also nice from the person that you're with to come and tell you, listen, Wasim, take a deep breath, uh, Mm -hmm. just feel, uh, ground yourself, Mm -hmm. uh, and then think of, are you really, uh, is this really what's going on? Or is it in your, not really in your head, but is it something that you are thinking of right now? And, 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 their own way and and the other way and <coughs> the other way around yeah. if she is let's say maybe uh, overthinking a specific scenario it's also my job as a partner to try to be there for her and calm uh, not really calm her down but try to state the facts because it's also good to uh, just get someone else's opinion sometimes definitely but uh, honestly we always have these uh, these uh, I would say moments and mm. us, our parents, uh, yes. people that, I mean, everyone has these moments and it's always good, especially as, again, as a, as a married couple right now to try to understand your partner more and more. Exactly. So if someone has ADHD, you try to be there for them. You try to understand what does ADHD mean? What does, if someone has uh, anxiety, for example, all right, and we all tend to have anxiety, mm. for 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 instance. But if someone is, let's say, uh, I mean, there are levels to that. Of but course. whatever a person is going through, it's just always good to 
try to put yourself in this person's shoes, even though we might never understand what they're going through, but always research. And that's what I feel uh, we honestly, personally, uh, at least me and Miral uh, sometimes try to do is to try to educate yourself, ed- a little, educate a ourselves little bit, yeah. uh, <coughs> from random articles online or from each other. Because mm-hmm. having transparency with each other and having, um, I would say, the willingness to listen to other, to the other person is mm-hmm. very important. Because if she's going through something and I might read a lot mm. and yeah, I get educated, but if I'm not willing to listen to her, then I'm not really trying to help her. Yeah. And the other way around. So that's that's yeah. mainly it on. Yeah, uh, honestly, thing is, you know, you said something earlier that reminded me of something, you know, I was I was like learning about or trying to do after therapy, which was, you know, a few months ago, I was going through a breakup and you know, trying to fix my life and all these things. And and what I would, you know, usually tend to do is I would overthink a million times. But at the time I felt like I didn't have that person to talk to about things. But what I would do is I would get into this whole loop of, I don't know, am I a bad person? And, and, even, and, even, if it's, and even if it's not, uh, you know, such a big thing, like if it's just like a small argument that we'd had, but it, it was like the final thing. Or if I say something that, you know, maybe it wasn't, uh, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe it wasn't well received or whatever it is. I'd get into this loop of questioning and doubting. And then I'd try to speak to that person who, who I would be with. Uh, but then what I've started to realize is patterns is that I, I tend to have this mode of being in these con- in these contexts, which is uh, fight or flight. And usually it's fight. I never flight, <laughs> never like, a, you know, uh, and I try to find a way to fix things and to resolve things and all this stuff. And and what I started to realize is, you know, sometimes it's not healthy for me either because a lot of times I feel like I, I tend to lose myself in those moments where I'm trying so hard to to push something that I know can work and I know has a lot of value, but somebody else just doesn't see that. So what I started to do now is I started to write down in bullet, bullet points or like a long form, how, how am I usually in the situations? And when I do feel like I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling like I'm, you know, I, I have, I'm so overwhelmed, so many emotions, so many thoughts, I go back and I read it. As soon as I read it, I'm like, okay, I'm like, you're doing that again. So now this is your time to take a step back, although it's very hard and a lot of times, take a step back, don't do anything, let it be, let, let the dust settle and then see, okay, how, how do I want to go at this now? Do I want to try something again? Or do I just uh, let it go? And usually what happens is, you know, <clears throat> is or what I feel is is the thing that usually happens is is to give time to things. Like sometimes I don't like to act on things on the spot. At least now I'm trying to do that. Um, just because one gives, you know, uh, you more time to reflect and think and as well for the other person. Um, and more importantly is that you're able to reflect on how you've trusted yourself more than even the other, I mean, other person, of course, but sometimes you need to think about yourself a, a little bit more. Um, and that's something that's helped me a lot. And, and and I always wonder, you know, and I think you've sort of talked about it a bit earlier, which was, you know, in your marriage now, you know, you know, you guys have gotten to a point where you guys are, you know, you're still learning. It's never, it's never done. You're still learning about each other and you're still trying to figure things out. And it's good to have that person who will Mish call you out in a bad way, but be like, well, see, you know, I've, I've noticed, you know, you're feeling, you know, you've like, I feel like you're a little bit anxious. Do you just want to take some time? Do you want to take a deep breath? Do you want to talk about it? It's having that safe space, which I think a lot of people want in their life. Um, and I think, you know, especially when you know your partner very well, when you know their ins and outs, when the, when you know their traumas, when you know how, how their mind works, then it becomes, uh, you know, a, a very nice place to be. Because you feel like you're safe, feel like okay, there's an, there's an, there's that arm around you mm. where you're not alone, you know, and you're able to share that, uh, share your thoughts. Um, hala, so sorry, um, you know. So to talk about another other thing, which you know as well, is is also to do with the mind and how how your mind worked. Uh, was Wasim used to be used to compete 
uh, which is, you know, sorry, a very different discussion from from marriage yeah. and relationships. But something that I am very intrigued about because I don't, I don't think I knew. I mean, I I knew of you at the time, but not so well. So, you know, so what was your hardest moment in that time? Where because I know with having ADHD, it it does tend to get a bit tough to keep on doing things right. So yeah. a lot of one time you're super motivated, and another time you're like, okay, no, I'm. I'm done, and and I know that you're. I mean, you're somebody who always gives everything two hundred percent. You never quit. You never give up. But I wonder, in that moment in your life, how did that happen? All right, uh, that's a, a completely different discussion yeah. uh, or topic that I'll I'll come to in a in a bit. Yeah, definitely. But it was it was a great great time that I'll I'll talk to in yeah. a, I mean about in a few. Yes. Uh, Look, the the feeling of wanting to be with someone or wanting to not be alone is is obviously something that us human beings always want to to feel. Mm. All right, and um, as you, as you said, I mean, and and what we were saying earlier is that it's always good from to learn from the past. All right. Uh, yeah, we've all dated, okay, and whatever. But, and it was all great. Yani, you know, people are. It was all great people, I would say. And mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that if you don't eventually get be with someone that they're not good people. Mm-hmm. But uh, I would say it's just trial and error. Why? Bec- uh, until you eventually get to be with someone that you will understand and they will understand you. Because if you don't go through you don't go through this process you will not know what you really want mm. uh, and not just what you really want but also how you would act and deal in specific situations uh, because you've never been through them or also i mean uh, on top of that how you would want the person you're with to even treat you in uh, to even treat you in in any situation mm. So as you were saying, Yanni, uh, you were, let's say, dating and uh, you would sometimes be in a fight situation, never flight, mm. right? I do, or I don't really necessarily agree. Why? Because I'm sure there are moments where you would have, and especially as men here, mm. Kun <laughs> no, uh, but uh, like where you would eventually tend to not reply to an, to something not really not reply as ignore but overlook it you know like someone said something that a bit annoyed you you're like you know what i'm gonna all right i'm just gonna i'm gonna right yeah so you're just gonna ignore it or not cause something that might trigger something else yeah you're not really running away from it no right but it's just some sometimes some things are just better left not uh yani i would say uh and yani you, you don't really want to just act on them that's yeah. fine it's not a big deal to me i'm not gonna talk about it yeah. if it is then obviously you would uh you would bring it up because mm-hmm. it's always very important to talk about the things that annoy you yeah um and I mean, you asked a lot of questions in a, in a very short uh, amount of time. But uh, look, again, I, I'm a very big fan of not acting when mm. uh, we're in a state of sadness or happiness because mm. you might tend to take the wrong decision. So it's good to be very rational when you take, yeah. just to make sure that you're doing the right decision, right? Yeah. But uh, you learn and everyone hopefully inshallah will eventually be with the person that they want to be with as you said we will never know the person fully we will never know like miran i yeah we've been married for uh three months and dated for two years or even our parents mm. will never don't know uh, each other fully i'm sure our my dad or your dad will sometimes Go like, okay, why did my mom or your mom, for example, uh, act in this way? Even though they've been married for like 30 years. Mm. The goal is to always get to know the person a bit more than how we do, like how we knew. 
for example, I, the goal is for me with Miral to, if let's say I know her right now at 50%, in 10 years to know her at 60, 70, 80, it will never be 100 because mm. it's not a destination, it's a journey. You will yeah. always, but the goal is to always know the person more and more. <laughs> and uh, again, just to close on, on this point, um, people want to be with someone or they want to be with a loved person and they want to feel appreciated and they don't want to feel alone, but they also don't want to work on their issues mm -hmm. or the things that they're not perfect on, or they, they might think they're perfect and still like they want to be with someone, but that it doesn't work like that. that to, that's why I said, I started with saying it's a trial and error. When you try, to be with someone, all right, and then doesn't work out, you take mm. the things, the learnings, and apply it. Mm. You move on, apply it on the next person, and then try and give it your all. Will it, if, if this works out, great. If not, take it and move on. I mean, we're never perfect. We all have flaws, we all have issues. Yeah. But the goal is to always know yourself more and know what you want and how you want to be treated to for you to be happy and to be able to treat the person as well mm -hmm. because if you date someone and then you don't heal from the things that hurt you you will throw and feel everything into your partner so this is very unpleasant of course yeah yeah, uh, yeah i mean that's what I. That's what I think about it. We can talk about this for ages, but I think, uh, I think we definitely can. I mean, I mean, look. I think it's definitely you know it's always good to, you know, to hear another guy talk about, you know, about this in 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 the way that you do because I think a lot of times we tend to see things as very black and white. Either it works or it doesn't work. But there's never that gray area of okay, we can both make things work and we can both try and we can both learn from each other. Even if it doesn't, even if some moments there's a there's a pothole in the middle you can get past it it's fine as long as there's that willingness to to see past things you know there's that willingness to you know to to be better for yourself mm. and for your partner as well you know of course. Uh, it's always good to talk to people Definitely. because if you don't talk you will never know someone's point of view and you might think that all i'm doing is right i'm a good person and everyone says i'm a good person but what if the things that you're doing are not necessarily the best things that you can do Definitely. So that's why it's always good to talk it out and um, get someone else's opinion. Yeah. Obviously, you want to get the right opinion. So that's where it gets a bit tricky because you need to find selective. Yeah, I mean, definitely. That one or whoever. I mean, your people who you yeah. who uh, trust and have your, you know, and, and have your best interest as for well. For sure. You know, people that have yeah. their best interest are usually your family Very and true. your trust friends. Definitely, That's but your true. family is Definitely. something, yeah. Yeah, they will always be there for you. That is very true. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just a learning and uh, it's, a, it's a journey. That's, it, it, that's it definitely is. what I feel. It always is. Life has always been a journey. It's never going to stop. Uh, as long as we know that we all have issues, we all have, we're never perfect. We will always learn. We will always grow. Uh, again, you know, the thing is, people have this idea of marriage where, like, okay, I'm, we're married, right? خلاص, and now you guys are set. No, it's not like that, you know, because we, we, were da we dated people, let's say, before, all right, and didn't work out. And right now, we decided that, okay, let's say your sister and I met, we dated, and then we're like, you know, because of her experiences and my experiences, and we're both at the same level I would say, or readiness in life, mm. then we decide, you know, these are the things, or this is the person that I can deal with. Mm. It's not that, you know, خلاص, we're going to get married and then life is going to be great, uh, perfect. Oh. You, know, it's, you, you pick your battles and you pick the person that you want to deal with and that want to deal with, not as in against, I, I'm not saying that you're going to... Um, be against or uh, mm -hmm. as in pick your battles that no like this is a person i want to uh, i want to argue with for the rest no it's this is the person that we will be will uh, there's a person that i'm willing to uh 
fight life with this mm-hmm. is a person that mm-hmm. is gonna be on my team on my side that we're going to uh, struggle together with Definitely. and uh, that's only this this only comes with trial and error and honestly the advice that I want to tell a lot of my friends out there that I hope they're watching don't be afraid and you know who you are <laughs> don't be afraid of trying yeah because if you don't try you'll never know Definitely. And you might think you know something or you want something, but you will never really know until you try. So just go out there, try. If you fail, pick yourself up and try again. I mean, pick yourself up, heal from whatever wound yeah, there was again. from that thing. And yeah, and then you try again. What's the worst that can happen? You you know what you don't want and you go ahead. That's it. And I think, by the way, that's one of the very, one of the, like one of the very important things, by the way, I learned from you, which is if you never try, you never know. Uh, and, and anything in life it doesn't need to be this but it can be with absolutely everything even you know uh starting my own podcast like honestly uh to, sorry to slightly change like yeah things but for me it was a scary idea at first you know yeah okay there was this huge drive i want to do it great awesome let's go but there's always that part of me just ah, but what if it doesn't work what if this but i'm like you know what at yeah. the end of the day you know at least I, like, if i never tried then i would never know how it would work and honestly um, you know, I'm loving every minute of it. Yeah. I'm loving meeting people, speaking to people. And to me, it's it's a great thing. And even, you know, with anything you do in life, try, do you, give it 100%. If it works, great. If it's if not, it's fine. it's not the end of the world. You have something else better for you, which is something that we, I mean, I always say, um, you know, there's always something better around the corner. Um, so, yeah. That's true. And again, as it's just trial. And yani if you don't, Let's say someone wants to do something. You, if you don't try to do it, even if you fail, you will always live with the doubt that what if I did? What if I did? What if? Do it. Exactly. Try. So um, I, I'm going to give an example of uh, just a, a bit of a background on myself, as mm. you were saying earlier, that I competed in a show. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, that's a green aid protein Sorry, bar. I had to because I got really hungry and All I don't right. want to seem rude that I'm the only one eating. So, yeah, so uh, <laughs> go for it. So, uh, I'm just going to give a bit of a background on myself. Um, so, I, as you know, uh, I mean, or not everyone, but for sure a lot of you guys do know, uh, I do online coaching, I do nutrition coaching, I, uh, I help people basically get to where they want or uh, I mean physically by eating the food options that they love and uh, this is a topic that's very dear to me because I've uh, been through a lot physically as well I was uh, at a point around 10 years ago I was 130 kgs with 50% body fat so half of my weight was fat And then I decided to just start training, go on YouTube and uh, learn what are the, let's say, what's the best way to lose weight. And I started, I got my journey into bodybuilding going Mm -hmm. on. And then uh, around three years ago, I decided to compete in a bodybuilding show. So I competed in men's physique. Uh, I placed top 10 in around 100 competitors it was uh, it was very tough I would say to to get to that physique of you around five six percent body fat dropping from 50 wow. percent I mean uh, it was incredibly tough mm. and it took a toll on uh, on on your on your mental health as well because you would go through a lot but it taught me a lot of discipline mm. and this is something that will stay with me forever uh yeah of course i didn't decide from day one that i'm gonna compete but eventually a couple of years down the line i'm like you know what that's something i want to do and i worked with my coach and we decided to compete in a, in a very healthy way and uh, yeah, I didn't win the show, but it's not about winning. That's what people think about mm. in general in, in bodybuilding. And that's where you res- resemble a lot to life in general. You're not competing with others. You're competing with yourself mm. because sometimes some people are just naturally gifted at something or they've been in it for longer. 
So the goal is that today should be better than yesterday and tomorrow should be better than today. So uh, that's, the, I would say, the philosophy that I apply in general with life. That You just fail, you try again. You fail, you try again. And eventually, if you're consistent enough, you will get to where you want. Uh, and that's the same ideology that I follow with my clients. So obviously I give them a diet plan, a workout mm -hmm. plan, and we do constant follow-ups and check-ins where the goal is, and I, I tell them, I tell all my clients since day one, it's not that, you know, from Monday, yalla, we're going to start and I'm not going to eat or cheat or whatever. No, I'm going to, I'm always very realistic with my clients. From tomorrow, we're going to, I'm going to teach you what is realistic and what's mm. going to happen. That you're going to fail. Mm. You're going to work on a plan. And then one day you're going to wake up. You're going to eat whatever you want because that's you don't feel like eating X, Y, Z, whatever. You don't feel like going to the gym. And that's okay. But the day after, you pick yourself up and you get to the gym or wherever. And eventually you learn. So uh, it's a very flexible dieting approach that I follow. Hence the name. I mean, on Instagram, yeah, flexible dieting coach. Uh, again, the, the goal is you don't restrict, restrict yourself from anything. You can eat and drink anything you want, not everything, and still get to where you want. Mm. That doesn't mean that you can eat or you should eat, for example, McDonald's or KFC or whatever. Yeah, we're boycotting these brands for now, but mm -hmm. you get what I mean. You can eat them and still get or get a six pack abs or or or, or, or get to where you want, mm -hmm. but it's not ideal. So we keep 80% whole foods or healthy foods and 20% junk or processed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to go into details why or why not, but that's the approach where you can eat a greenade bar, or you can eat a Snickers bar, or a Kinder chocolate, or whatever you want, and still get to where you want. Uh, I, when I first started, I definitely did not uh, know this approach. I started on myself mm -hmm. training five, six times a week, seven times, sometimes doing twice cardio uh, in the beginning of my journey and eating only chicken breast and broccoli and I know that's something you are definitely relating to. I love this. Chicken <laughs> breast, broccoli, white, uh, egg whites, uh, yeah. brown rice and I don't know what. And then doing that for two, three months nonstop. And then uh, three months down the line, I would lose my shit and I would go out on a birthday. Yeah, I would lose a lot of weight in, in those two, three months go out on a birthday and I swear to God, I would eat half the cake, half the whole cake. And I used to think I'm weak. Oh, like, why am I not being able to commit? I'm weak, you know, we see him as a weak guy. He cannot commit to his diet. And now, now that I've done two certifications, one of them is called MNU, Mac Nutrition University. It's an evidence-based approach to nutrition. Uh, it's one of the best, if not the best, uh, certifications for nutrition where uh, in one of the chapters they talk about food disorders or eating disorders mm -hmm. and apparently, and that's a proven fact, that the number one cause of eating or food disorders or eating disorders is food restriction. Of course. Yeah. So when you restrict yourself from something, you're going to have an eating disorder just like binge eating disorder or bulimia or whatever. And these tend to come up from people's childhood sometimes where it's my role as a coach to identify those trigger points to see if a, co uh, if a client has any sort of eating disorder yeah. to make them aware. Now, there's a fine line between treating and identifying because yeah. as a coach, I cannot work on if someone has an eating disorder, I should make them aware that I think I do, uh, I, I see these patterns and I think you have X, Y, Z. And I should recommend you to a therapist or to a psychiatrist mm -hmm. or to a psychologist. Why? Because there's, there are things that are outside our scope of work and we cannot, I would say, give medication to someone. But our, our job as coaches is to identify these and make sure that people are aware. Mm -hmm. 
and deal with them. By, by dealing with them is that we be as flexible as we can because we don't want to add to these trigger points. Yeah. So uh, when I, I studied that and I learned that, you know what? It's not that I was weak. It's that the method that I was following was very bad. Mm. And I will never ever in my life tell a, co- a client, you can eat this and you can't eat that. Yeah. I will give them a, a meal plan, but all my clients know that. If they want to eat anything, anything that is outside the plan, all they need to do is ask me and I will tell them how to play around with it. I, I bring this up all the time. And again, I'm, I'm just very honest with, mm-hmm. with all my clients because that's how it should be. If let's say I give my a specific client three, four meals a day, cool, four meals a day. And then whatever it is, uh, it's very tailored to each person. And then I ask them if uh, if you guys want to go out, you have a celebration, a birthday, whatever. T- let me know. So if let's say a client tells me, listen, I'm going to the movies tomorrow and I want to have popcorn, I'm like, great. You'll remove this from the first meal, you'll remove this from the second, and this from the fourth, and then you'll have the popcorn instead. So you just compensate mm. things. Yeah. You just add things up, as long as and then eventually you'll you'll uh, they learn by time how to deal with it. And they're good to go. Because if you tell someone you cannot have this or you cannot have that, I'm telling you, Kareem, I'm honest. Mm. If let's say you hate broccoli, I know you like broccoli because you love your greens. <laughs> but if, uh, a bit too much actually. But if let's say, Kareem, you hate broccoli. If I tell you, Kareem, tomorrow for the next three months, you can eat anything you want but broccoli. I guarantee you in three months, you're going to come and tell me, I want broccoli. Yeah. Because what you can't get, you want. And this is human nature. Exactly. And I was about to say this. It's, it goes back to, again, to our to our uh, foundations or our roots as, as humans. I mean, one of our scavengers, we, we, we often, you know, we often act on this idea of uh, FOMO and deprivation, where in terms of if I know that I cannot get this, I'll do whatever I can. To. It's, it's like it's like when you tell a, it's like when you tell a kid, oh, you can't play, you can't play your PlayStation mm. or you can't play with your toys mm. or you can't go out. They'll do whatever they can to go out. Exactly. You know, whether it's lying or like, oh, I finished my homework and then they rush out with their parents realize that they actually didn't do their homework. That sort of stuff to, to get to the point that they want to. And, and, I, and I've experienced that, by the way, with food. A hundred percent. You know, uh, just simply in terms of, you know, me feeling like I need to eat a certain way. Uh, but the, you know, but the problem then becomes when I am, and you've seen it, when I get in those moments where, okay, I want to have a cheat or like a, Un- relatively unhealthy meal. I'm like, ah, oh, should I? Should I not? How much? Uh, and then I started to question in my mind, if I eat this today, it's, is it going to affect me tomorrow? Mm. And and I, and I, and I think this is what you're promoting, which is actually it doesn't affect as much. Where you need to, you know, reshape the puzzle. Hundred percent. Move this from here. Take this from there. Add this. I was just going to say that it's just about reshaping the puzzle, and you just need to look at it from a bigger point of view. Again. I might be explaining it in a in a way where it it seems that it's easier said than done, and it is. But once you look at it and learn by time, mm-hmm. again you try, you fail, you try, you fail, you try, you fail, until you eventually get it. Then you understand that all right, that's what it takes to let's say lose weight or gain mm-hmm. weight or whatever. And mm-hmm. when we say weight, I mean usually fat, because that's yeah. what usually people want to. Yeah. And uh, it's funny that you said that because these eating disorders that come up are not because of something that you've done in the past one, two, three months. Mm. It's something from childhood. And uh, I'm sure growing up, you see, uh, even now, you see a lot of parents, for example, tell your tell their kids, don't eat this or don't eat that or you got to finish your plate or I don't know what. And, and in a way, that's a bit aggressive. Yeah. So this me uh, and this person growing up mm. will... Uh, eventually have this negative connotation with food mm. where if you look at for example people with anorexia or bulimia or or whatever and eventually try to understand their childhood and that's those are the things that we learned as a, as a coach in MNU is that all right you are actually doing this or you're behaving in this way because of something that you've been through when you were young mm. and it, mm. actually it's it's so shockingly uh uh, it's so shocking to to see that how common this is that you know what this person for example 
has anorexia or bulimia where they would let's say anything they eat they would force themselves to throw it out mm-hmm. why because when they were young they were let's say super overweight or obese and mm-hmm. they were bullied and uh they ha- just have a negative connotation with yeah. food that you know what i cannot eat this and if i eat something I'm going to gain weight and people are uh, uh, not going to be happy of the way I look and going to make fun of me and uh, I'm not going to look good, even though they look great. And it's it's just this, I would say, resemblance to food that they've had since they were young mm. that go like, all right, you know what? I'm not going to do that and uh, I'm not going to eat. I'm not gonna, I'm going to force myself to throw up. And that's just because of it could do, I mean, it's not always the case, mm-hmm. but it's just because of the experiences they've been through. Yeah. So it's very, very, very important to be very careful and mindful of what we're doing, uh, and especially for everyone, all the parents out there. It's be as flexible and uh, the, as least as restricted as you can with food with your kids, because you don't want them to have this fear of something with food like yeah and uh so it's just education honestly and uh, working with the coaches that really know what they're talking about because especially nowadays i mean information is out there everyone can get anything you want but is it really right or not like a lot of people for example think that Oh, if you eat past 6 p.m. or past 7 or if you eat carbs or whatever, you're going to gain weight. You should Mm. cut this out. But is it really right? Where did this come from? And Mm. it's us, it's our role as coaches to to break these stigmas and to put the right education out there. So, yeah. And I think as well, you know, that's part of my issue uh, with a lot of things, you know, about about researching in general not issue but sometimes a lot of people take it as this is a one-size-fits-all approach Mm. in terms of if if i eat past 6 p.m it means that what i read on whatever website uh, you know it's gonna it's it's gonna be the same impact but it's not always entirely the case right there's a lot of people who either with super high metabolism who you know they they have the ability to eat whatever it is that they want who they don't put on the weight and they still look fine and like other people who um who who do still you know uh, follow what's written online, but they don't have the same results if you want as what's written. So it's it's sort of understanding the fact that one, I think yes, for a role as a coach, definitely you need to raise awareness in terms of yeah, uh, your body is different than everyone else. But two, also I think as well to coach the 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 mental aspect of it as well. And I think this is a huge part of of you know of what a lot of coaches are. Some are doing, some are not doing. But, you know, uh, in terms of being kinder to yourself with food in specific, because a lot of times, you know, when I, you know, used to train in the past, uh, like with different coaches, they'd be like, yeah, eat this, eat this, eat that. So, so what if I don't want to? What if I don't, what if I don't like it? What if, you know, uh, it doesn't feel right for me, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, and again, I think it's a matter of instilling the fact that it's it's flexible, it's it's easy, it's not as 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 tough or as horrific as a lot of uh, people can make it seem, you know. Um, so yeah, I think you know, Wasim. Uh, firstly, it was incredible having you, Sarah. I mean, I of course I know you because you know family now, but uh, yeah. but I think as well it was good to, to see another side of you that I have I personally haven't seen um, and heard of before. So. I really thank you for doing that. Uh, as you know, the way we like to end every episode is I'm going to hand you this notebook and I'm going to want you to write a quote that, you know, that you want somebody who is struggling or somebody who, uh, yeah, somebody who's struggling can read and can reflect off of and maybe help them, uh, yeah, help them today or tomorrow or forever. So, all right. This is your um, own canvas. Definitely very, very great. And uh, I have the right quote ready. All right. So this is your canvas. Paint it the way you want to. All right. So I'll just write it here. So we j- I'm not going to write my name, right? I'll just write the quote. Yeah, you can write your name. 
I mean, what do usually people? What do people you, you write their name? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So just a famous quote to someone. That, I mean, yeah, and it doesn't have to be famous. It could be something. It could be something that I mean, like you that you've. Uh, but you don't have to mention I'm, who. No, no. But I mean something. So, yeah, it could be something that, that you've either created by yourself in mm. your hard time, something that you've taken from somewhere, and it makes sense to okay. you. Cool. Wow. wow. So, do we have to say the quote? We can. If you want to, yeah, yeah. you can. So to me, is, uh, this quote really, uh, I think of very, very often, is uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I think it's a quote by Albert Einstein, where uh, a lot of people keep doing the same thing over and over and over, and they expect to wake up one day and see that oh it's gonna wake up it's gonna it's gonna uh, it's gonna work or I'm mm-hmm. gonna see different results and I love this quote because it just me some people out there always uh, wanna see a change but mm-hmm. they or wanna see a change in themselves let's say or mm-hmm. in the world or in, in their life but they keep doing the same thing over and over and over. So, I mean, I wrote something under that if you want to see different results, you got to do something that you've never done. Otherwise, you're going to keep mm. getting the same thing out of life. Very mm. interesting. So, uh, yeah. That's, uh, no, I, th- I think, honestly, this is, this one hits home uh, a little bit. <laughs> where, where I know I, I tend to do the same things and I expect something new and different, but it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. So, so, no, it's, it's definitely one that I will be using. Uh, in my day-to-day life and uh, yeah and then i'll let you know how that goes if it works cool if not uh, we'll ask you for a new one perfect thank you so much lots of love it's been a pleasure yeah and i'll see you for dinner over dinner tonight yes (laughs) definitely (laughs) yeah yeah, we have plans as well so i was seeing you in like it was really really great and uh hopefully i'd I'd, inshallah i'd love to be back again definitely uh, definitely keep it going really proud of you Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. See you on the next one. Take care. Yeah. Now we're done. Thank you. Good stuff. Loves it.